All right. <laughs> My name is Jack Buchanan. I'm a senior at Lincoln High School. This poem is called The Church of O.B. Pete. Recently, I've reflected on a trip that I took down south. While I traveled to my roots, I thought of my future and the country that I was born in, how times were changing. It seemed every day there was another shooting or presidential blunder caught on the news, but I was on holy ground in the south. I found myself in church. Rarely do I ever attend. I have nothing against it, but in my experience, the only times I've ever been in one were for weddings and funerals. In my story, the latter is what brought me, not ladders like Jacob to find a way to heaven, no repentance in my makeup for the absences, empty spaces in my pew. I was there for my grandmother's funeral. And unlike an unfaithful, I felt not uncomfortable. There was space for a sinner in my seat. After all, this was my great-grandfather's building, the church of O.B. Pete. The search for dry eyes was easy as pecan pie, the sweetest funeral I've ever been to. I was astounded there was no sorrow there. Even in our procession, in black clothes, in black cars, in black bodies, a perfect protection, there was no sorrow. Just church songs that rain refrains like raindrops pangs off of tin roofs. And I thought of more roofs, roofs like Dylan. The man who murdered nine black bodies in a church like this one, a place with no sorrow. Simultaneously, the minister rose to his feet as if to remind me there would be none of that in the church of O.B. Pete. Here, no sullen faces sunken into shoulders telling stories that seemed made up to pass the time and take our minds off this, but reminded of this. Voices rang high, made music to dance with the dead, oblivious to them. On outside steps were dangers that I had heard of, most of them they had lived through. Everybody in this building, my building, seemed so easy to persecute. An insurmountable force to beat like the black body bag sized perfectly for black bodies shot dead in the street. Somehow, not an issue in the church of O.B. Pete. My train of thought was derailed by yet another song. This time from my great aunt. Solo, she sang not so much beautifully, but tolerable. Her black lungs and her black body slipped black soot between her vocal cords that hinted at what used to be a fire. She sang while she sobbed. And for the first time in this invincible building, I felt something familiar. Her eyes were closed and her voice did not stutter as she pictured God and her sister meeting. I don't remember the words. I don't have to. Here I realized the dangers of the outside world weighing in our door frame in the face of a family stitched together through circumstance. A patchwork hammock I could lay my head in. Eyes to the sky, I looked for heaven. Here I felt my holiest. Perhaps a pulpit sesh could pull me in. Divulged in minor keys, God whispered unto me, your worry is unwarranted. Take a look and wait. Watch if you wish, she said, don't look for me. Look for someone with answers that you could meet. Look forever, look in vain, find O.B. Oh, 